before I start, I would like to thank uh, all of the uh, organisers and the producers of this fabulous event. Um, it was lovely to be invited to speak to you all today. Uh, also, greetings to everyone watching here today, uh, wherever you are, whatever time zone you're coming from. Thank you for uh, dropping in and um, checking this out. I'm here today to talk about presenting inclusively. Um, if I was to get a little bit more specific and not get locked into uh, a specific abstract title uh, like the previous team talked about, I'd probably call it how to present accessibly uh, because when we talk about inclusion and diversity, we also have to think about uh, disability um, when, we, when we're uh, considering these things. So just to cover off who I am, I'm Alison Ravenhall. Uh, I'm coming to you from a basement, uh, hence the lighting, uh, in Melbourne. Uh, we're not in lockdown anymore. It's not that serious, but that's my chosen uh, place of choice. Um, if you tweet, I'm on Twitter. My handle there is Raven Alley, R-A-V-E-N-A-L-L-Y. If you like what I talk about today and you'd like to hear more about digital accessibility, I'm on Notice. It's N-O-T-I dot S-T slash Alison Ravenhall. And you can see slides from today as well as uh, some of the previous conferences that I've spoken at. Uh, my first conference, I heard someone talking about conferences and where they first spoke. Um, I got invited to speak for my very first conference at an accessibility conference in California, uh, which is a very long way to go for your very first time. I was absolutely petrified, um, but I've moved on a little bit. So I work in digital accessibility, and that means that I work with organizations every day to help ensure that their websites and their apps are built in such a way uh, that people can use them independently uh, regardless of uh, disability. There are five uh, areas, uh, personal characteristics uh, that we particularly focus on in digital accessibility. And those are vision, hearing, cognition, mobility, and speech. Cognition is the way that we think, the way that we uh, remember things, the way that we process information. Um, it can also relate to uh, language and numeracy, literacy. Um, it can uh, relate to foreign language as well. It's a very, very broad umbrella. It can even include uh, things to do with attention and concentration. So I bring these things uh, to my work every day and I feel like uh, as a speaker, you can bring these things to your presentation so that um, you maximise uh, the ability of your audience uh, to uh, enjoy your talk, to understand it and, and to go away with those, you know, you know with those learnings that you, you want to pass on. So I've, I've only got a little bit of time today. I'm just, I've got 20 minutes and I've burned a, a bit of it already. So let's jump in and look at what makes a presentation accessible. I talked about those five areas, those five personal characteristics. Today, I'm going to concentrate on three of those because I think they're the ones that you are primarily going to be concerned about with respect to your audience. And that is vision, hearing and cognition. First up, vision. Um, please do not make the assumption that everyone in your audience uh, can see clearly. Uh, there are a range of vision conditions, uh, you know, ranging uh, people may have 20-20 perfect vision all the way through to being totally blind. Uh, there is a very broad spectrum of vision conditions in the middle. Um, you know, vision can be clouded, vision can be uh, limited uh, as a tunnel, um, all sorts of manner of things. To maximize people's ability to see your slides and see your presentation, um, I've got a few points to cover here. High contrast. High contrast is, is, a, is a big deal. Uh, the Fifty Shades of Grey uh, is not um, a really good rec design recommendation for your slides. Subtlety 
is uh, also not the deal. I really love the um, the event uh, color palette and I've adopted it for my own slides. You'll see that I'm using the same uh, gray and yellow that they have because the contrast, it really bites. It jumps out, It's the colors are popping. It's very, very clear what's going on. Simple fonts uh, go a long way with uh, folks with low vision. Um, the ability to identify uh, each letter shape is very important. Uh, so some of the uh, fonts that you may consider with respect to handwriting or cursive fonts, um, you'd better make those really big or very clear um, and you know really gauge how well they can be read uh, from the back of a room. Similarly, huge text, bump it up. You, it might feel a little bit shouty to you while you're sitting at your desk designing your slide, but bear in mind that when your slide is presented, it's not being presented at a desk. Well, today we're virtual, so you're, you may be at your desk, but uh, in, in the real world, uh, back um, you know offline presentations, you've got a big screen and sometimes a huge room and folks are going to be sitting down the back. Um, when you're sitting at your desk, your font looks huge. When you're sitting at the back of the hallway trying to see your font, that's probably more the, uh, the experience of someone sitting in a conference hall. So really bump up that size. Don't be scared of the big. Don't, don't color code your information. Um, color coding, saying, you know, using green text for good things and red text for bad things uh, without otherwise um, visually indicating the issue may not be perceptible by someone who has uh, a color perception issue like color blindness. Um, please make sure that you're using some other form um, of, of color of coding that doesn't rely on color. The best way to check this is to turn off uh, color on your slides entirely. Um, view them in grayscale. If your slides still make sense in grayscale, you can still see the bad things versus the good things or you know column A versus column B, then you're on a winner. Finally, please do describe your visuals. Like I said, you can't assume that everyone in your room can see what is on the screen beside you, in front of you, behind you, wherever it is. So if you have visuals on your slide that are telling part of the story, then please take the time to describe them. Never, ever say, as you can see here. Um, I've, sat, I've sat next to a, a friend of mine who is blind during a presentation and every time he heard, as you can see here, he just slumped in his seat. And, you know, I would lean over and quickly go, oh, okay, there's a picture of a lady and she's, um, you know, reaching up to put something on a shelf or whatever it was. It's, it's not the way that he wanted to feel going to this conference. Um, so do take the time, a brief explanation of what's going on. You may notice in the slides to this point, before you call me out as a hypocrite, that uh, all of my slides to this point have had visuals. Mind you, I would call these decorative images. They are not informing directly the story that I'm telling. There is currently a picture of a woman holding a magnifying glass uh, up to her eye um, on the slide that is currently on screen. It does not directly inform what I am trying to convey, so I haven't bothered to describe it, though I have now. <laughs> uh, you, you can see where I'm going here. Something that's relevant, something that's informative, something that's meaningful, take the time. Don't assume that people can read your Twitter handle in the bottom corner. You'll notice that I called it out uh, when I had it on the screen before. Moving on from vision, we also have to consider the ability of our audience to hear what we're saying. Um, I'm very pleased to note that uh, this event today is being captioned. You can see uh, below your player that uh, there is an option to show the captions. Feel free to pop it up and have a look at the excellent uh, live captioning services uh, being provided today. 
if your event doesn't provide live captioning services as a whole, um, as a presenter, you do have the option to turn on. A lot of captioning services are embedded uh, within the uh, slideshow presentations these days. Uh, I know PowerPoint does it, Google Slides, um, and some of the others as well. They're AI versions. They're not nearly as good as our fantastic live captioners, our human live captioners, um, but they're better than nothing. Always, always face your audience. Um, for those that are hard of hearing or have, you know, have some residual hear hearing and even some folks who are deaf, a lot of them rely on lip reading um, in order to uh, understand what you say uh, to augment the amount of sound that they are um, receiving via their ears. Uh, this doesn't mean that you have to change your delivery or the way that you speak. You don't have to open your mouth any wider or make any duck face lips or anything. Don't adjust the way you talk. Um, the, the key thing is to speak to your audience. Um, it is very tempting when you've got a screen up behind you and um, you might want to turn to that screen and point at things. Um, even turning side on, you're taking your face away from your audience. So as much as possible, face forward, um, show show your mouth, show your face, show your expression so that if even if the sound isn't getting through, uh, your passion and your uh, expression are, are telling at least part of the story and your lip reading uh, is available as well. Finally, on this one, do please use a microphone if it is offered, if it is available. Uh, some folks who are new to speaking particularly, some folks find it very challenging. You could be a little bit shy. You're sort of like, oh, my word, I don't want to hear my, my own voice amplified and bouncing around uh, this, this auditorium. Um, it can, I, I totally get it, it can be very, um, you know, in your face to, to hear your voice at that level. Um, all I'll say to that is do please try and get over it. Uh, often in a lot of those public spaces, uh, like the convention centre up in uh, Sydney and Melbourne, um, those uh, microphones will be hooked up to what we call hearing loops, uh, which are able to broadcast your voice directly into hearing aids, um, cochlear implants and other hearing devices. Uh, so it's not a vanity thing. Um, it, it is a mechanical thing. It's something that is going to help. So please get over that uh, thing. Everyone else has heard your voice before. It's just you who's hearing it properly for the first time when you get a mic. Uh, so, so embrace it. Just don't try and swallow the microphone or stuff it right up in front of your face because it's going to impede that lip reading again. So Practice your mic technique if you're if you're using a handheld mic. Uh, you know, hold it below uh, like you're about to uh, eat an ice cream. Um, don't hold it up up here uh, like you're smoking a cigar or something. I didn't really think about my metaphor before I used it. Finally, um, my third uh, area that I'd like to cover off when you're thinking about your audience is cognition, the way that they're taking in the information uh, that you're, you're presenting to them. Um, it was covered in the previous session um, and I was so glad to hear it. Uh, your audience is hearing you speak for the first time. They're hearing about you presenting this topic for the first time. You, on the other hand, have heard it and written about it and thought about it so, so much. So you're familiar, you, you know what's going on, and so it might be very tempting to just race on through. But plain language is the way to go. Simple slides are the way to go. Plain language, to me, is a demonstration that you really, really know what you're talking about. If you have the ability to take your topic and break it down into plain language uh, and present it back in a meaningful way, you know your stuff. Um, it's not about presenting university dissertations. We're not doing uh, PhDs. It's all about plain language. Um, 
you know, consider the fact that your audience uh, may be of varying literacy, consider the fact that some folks may be doing uh, translation of some level if, if their native language is not your language. Um, there could be all sorts of reasons why uh, plain language is a benefit. And I think it was Lorraine who said earlier, everyone basically benefits, and I'm going to write on that. Similarly, simple slides benefit everyone. Um, the more stuff there is on a slide, the less time people are listening to you. Every time you put up a new slide, you lose the audience for the amount of time it takes for them to read through that content. So um, keep that slide as simple as possible. You don't need whole sentences, just, you know, bullet points, key phrases, um, really simple. I, I, you know, the, the slide um, talk earlier, you know, covered it all and I agree with it. Just keep it, pair it back. It's not a script. Um, use your presenter notes if you need a script. Keep your animations to a minimum. Um, I'm talking about transitions. You'll notice that my slides don't have any transitions. I don't slide them in and out. I don't waft them up and down. They don't flow through a plug hole. Um, and that also goes for uh, GIFs, animated memes, and all the rest of it. They're all good fun. I'm not the fun police, <laughs> but um, some of those animations uh, may cause people to feel uh, nausea and uncomfortable, um, particularly the sliding ones. So please keep those to a minimum. And with respect to the, the, the looping GIFs and, and those sorts of things, some folks are going to get so distracted uh, by that, that constant movement that's happening over your shoulder. And again, you're going to lose your audience, which you totally don't want to do. So by all means, play a GIF um, and have it have it play, you know, whilst you're taking a sip of water or you're wanting them to take in uh, the last point that you made, but stop it again when you start again so that the concentration and the attention comes back from the GIF and onto you uh, where, where you want it to be. So in my last minute, I just have to say, you never know who's going to be in your audience. Don't make assumptions about uh, who may be there, uh, what their physical or mental capabilities are. Um, you know, cast your net and design your talk and design the way that you you speak um, to cater to the broadest audience. And um, I guarantee, uh, you know, it's 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 well worth it. I talk about these tips and more in an article I wrote for Smashing Magazine. Uh, if you want to go and read that, um, I've, re I've created a bit.ly link. It's uh, bit.ly slash accessible dash presentations dash smashing. Uh, thanks for listening. I've been Alison Ravenhall. If you want to catch up with me on Twitter, I'm there. My handle is Raven Alley, R-A-V-E-N-A-L-L-Y. So congratulations on getting your speaking careers kicked off. Um, I look forward to hearing and seeing you sometime soon. Thanks. <laughs>